minus 6i minus 9i squared. I know I went quick on the distribution, but that's something we should be able to handle right there. Are you still with me? Yes. Okay. Now is the part to take your time. I know you know how to distribute. Now is the part where you got to really think about the i squared, think about what's happening to those signs, and get them right. It'd be a shame if you guys knew how to do this and got this far and then messed the i's up and got different signs, or forgot about the i squared and got different signs. So we're going to do 6 plus 9i plus 2i plus 3. What's the i squared again? We're going to have 4 plus 6i minus 6i. If you want to eliminate these right now, that's fine with me. I'm just showing them so that you see every bit of work. Minus 9 times the i squared is negative 1. Again, go slowly. Think through it. The toughest part about this is the negatives. That's it. Hey, you still right so far? Mm -hmm. What's this mean? Minus 3. 6i minus 6i. Those are the same term with a different sign. That's going to eliminate. Plus nine. This is going to be, is it going to be minus 9 or plus 9? Plus nine. Can you raise your hand if you can follow me down that far? Are you sure? You guys over here, yes? Right side? Let's combine what we can. If I combine these numbers, what's my real part going to be, please? 3. What's my imaginary part? 11i. Over? 13. Good. Are you still with me, guys? Yep. Now, we're not quite done. No, we're not quite done. I know you're all excited, like, oh, yes, this is awesome. Right now, you just take the butt off of complex numbers. But there's one more thing that we need to do. It's not hard. Okay, it's not hard. You have no more real math to do. What you need to understand is that this really is not a complex number yet in the proper form. This is a complex number over a real number. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. You're just going to split this up and make a legitimate complex number out of it. How you have a legitimate complex number is a real part plus or minus an imaginary part. This is the only extra thing you need to do. You're going to take this and you're going to write this as this fraction plus this fraction. Remember, you can separate a fraction by using the same denominator in two spots. So here you get 3 over 13 plus 11 over 13. That's the complex number. You can always split a fraction up like that, where you use the numerator, this first term of the numerator, over the denominator. Plus or minus, plus or minus. The second term of the numerator over the same denominator. Notice how they still have a common denominator, don't they? Mm -hmm. You could put those two things together. That's a complex number. What's the real part here, folks? Three over thirteen. Good. What's the imaginary part? Eleven thirteenths i. Eleven over thirteen i. Now notice that you could reduce some of these fractions if possible. Here you can't because we have you know all prime numbers. But if they weren't prime numbers, you could reduce those fractions as well. So far, so good? You having fun? Yeah. Do you like this section? Yes. I do. This is one of my favorite sections. Is it easier than you thought it would be to deal with complex numbers? Yes. Yeah. If not, then fine then, whatever. How about 6 over 5i? How about 6 over 5i? Now, we, we know in order to divide things, in order to divide complex numbers, Multiply it by 5, sorry. Well, we're supposed to, to find the conjugate somehow, right? Mm -hmm. Here we have a real number, or a complex number, the 0i on the, on the numerator. And we have a complex number, or imaginary number, 0 plus 5i on the denominator. Can you think of what the conjugate will be for this thing? Why negative 5i? It's the opposite. Yeah, zero plus 5i. Ah, so this really is like 0 plus 5i. You follow? 
then our conjugate is supposed to be 0 minus 5i over 0 minus 5i. So basically, these zeros aren't doing anything. You just need to know if you're dividing by just an imaginary number, which we are here, the conjugate is just opposite of that. It's 0 minus. So we're going to have the negative 5i over negative 5i. Ladies and gentlemen, are you all right with that one? Okay, let's see what happens. Are you sure? You all right? See what happens here. On the numerator, how much am I going to get? On the on the denominator, how much am I going to get? Negative twenty-five i squared. Mm -hmm. Are we going to leave it i squared? No. Definitely not. No, no, no. I squared is how much? Negative. So we get negative thirty i over negative twenty-five times. How much is that going to give us when we have negative twenty-five? So I'll get negative thirty i over 25. Can you simplify the fraction? No. Why not? No. Well, yeah. You shouldn't write a zero over one. Because I split it up. I don't know. That's possible. Sure you can. Why? These are just numbers being multiplied together. This is a square root being multiplied by 30. Right? Mm -hmm. Square root of negative one. You can sim you can simplify this. So if we write it like that, are you gonna tell us we're wrong? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, you know you're not wrong. You're absolutely right. You're just not done. Oh. It's like saying, "Am I wrong here?" No, you're absolutely right. This is. Are you yes. done with the problem? Um, no. The answer is this. <laughs> you have a perfect. You're doing great. Just finish. Right. So here. You do need to simplify. That's going to be negative six fifths i. Oh. Yeah. I get it You're done. Congratulations. Here's your prize. You get a smiley face from your teacher. Those are really the only two examples I can give you. Do you feel okay with them? Raise your hand if you do. If you're not raise your hand, I'm assume that you don't. Oh, you do. Okay. Okay, we got it. Try two on your own. We'll talk about one more thing, the powers of I, and then move on. Question? Before you raise that. <laughs> <laughs> what now? <laughs> on the bottom one, how it says like 3 over 13 plus 11. Yeah. 13. Is there any way that we could still like simplify that and then make it like where it's 8 over 13? Where you can do it What now? Or, I mean, I'm sorry, 13 over 13. I. Like if you add those? No. Yeah, right there. Right here? Mm -hmm. Do what now? If we're going to add them, you like 14 plus 9. No, okay, I see what you're saying. No, this is, remember that this is a number, and this is a number attached to i. It is really similar to having something like this. Can you add those? No. This has the i with it. Now, I know I'm writing the i after the fraction, but notice it is still multiplied. This, the only reason why we're allowed to do this is because this is the same as this. True? Mm -hmm. Which is the same as, that's equal to i. That's why we're able to do that. This fraction is still this fraction. Okay, you're not allowed to add those together. That's why I can, I can do the i at the back end of that. Same, same reason. Oh, did that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, because it's gone on now. <clears throat> okay, try two on your own, and then we'll talk about powers of I briefly and be done for our day. Do that one for me. And this one.
So to divide those complex numbers, we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. The reason why this works again is because that i really is a square root. It's a square root of negative 1. And we knew that the whole conjugate idea is going to eliminate those square roots on the denominator of our fraction. That's why it works. It's eliminating those i's because they're square roots. We just can't lose the fact that we're going to have some i squareds. We can't lose the fact that those things are negative 1. And that's going to change some of the signs inside of our problem. Hey, what's the conjugate we should be working with up here? Yeah, don't let it change into a one, right? That would be a bad thing. Hopefully, multiply by three minus i over three minus i, and then you're going to. Did you get that on your numerator? Yeah. 12 minus 4i minus 3i plus i squared? Mm -hmm. You get the i squared? Mm -hmm. You get the 9 minus 3i plus 3i minus i squared? Mm -hmm. Hey, do these i squares simplify? Can you cross those out? No, because they're combined. With yeah, you get some subtraction in there and some addition. You can't do that. Next thing we're going to do is change any i squareds we have into negative ones. So we'll have the 12 minus 4i minus 3i, and then this is going to be plus negative 1. i squared is negative 1. I've written everything the same except the i squared. I have 9 minus 3i plus 3i and minus negative 1. So far, so good. Did you guys all make it down that far? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to change the signs here. That's what this is doing for us, really. We have 12 minus 4i minus 3i minus 1, and 9 minus 3i plus 3i plus 1. Do you see where the minus 1 and the plus 1 are coming from? Yep. Mm -hmm. We have plus and negative, that's minus. Minus and negative, that's plus. Then we'll combine what we can. We should get a complex number out of this. 12 minus 1, we've got 11. <coughs> negative 4i, negative 3i, minus 7i. 9 plus 1 gives us 10. Minus 3i plus 3i, that's what we wanted to have happen. Those i's are gone. We get this number. How many have we got that far? Did you take it one step further? Yep. Yes. Good. Our answer here is 11 tenths minus 7 tenths i. Split it up. Make sure the i is on the back end of your fraction, and you're done. The last problem. Of course, we still need to multiply by a conjugate, but in our case, the conjugate is simply negative 3i. And we do that on both the top and the bottom. We get negative 6i over negative 9i squared. We get negative 6i over negative 9 times negative 1. That's going to give us negative 6i over positive 9. And if we simplify that, we get negative 2 thirds i. Would you feel okay with multiplying and dividing these complex symbols? Now the last thing we're going to talk about in the last minute that we have, we're going to talk about powers of i.